dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. A Lexington police officer was shot during an investigation this afternoon. Kentucky State Police officials confirmed that an officer was shot on Newtown Pike around 1.30 p.m. Saturday. They say officers saw four minors they believed to be involved in a prior shooting. One of them fired a weapon striking an officer. Another officer returned gunfire. None of the minors were hit. The officer was wearing a ballistic vest and was transported to the hospital with a reported non-life threatening injury. Three suspects have been detained. The Kentucky State Police is investigating an armed robbery that occurred in Pike County on Thursday. KSB say a man entered, entered the Dollar General on Zebulon Highway around 8 p.m. Investigators say the man pulled out a gun and demanded money from the cashier. He then ran away with an undisclosed amount of cash. Police say he was last seen wearing a black mask, gray hoodie and jeans. KSP is asking people with information to call the Pikeville Post at 606-433-7711. The Virginia Tech student who was injured in a hookah lounge shooting is out of surgery and recovering this afternoon. According to Virginia Tech's Twitter account, the student was one of three people injured Friday night at the Melody Hookah Lounge near the campus in Blacksburg. Another person was fatally shot. Blacksburg Police has not released the identity of any people involved in the shooting. It said a homicide investigation is underway. Multiple law enforcement agencies are assisting in the area. Well, it was a dry start to the weekend here in the mountains. We stayed nice and sunny. Really a nice start to the weekend after that wintry end to the work week on Friday. Let's take a look at that camera over at the London Corbin Airport. We are sitting at 28 degrees, so it is a chilly start to the evening. However, we are dry under that mostly clear sky. Temperatures across the board in those middle to upper 20s, 24 for Jackson, 28 over in London, 27 here in Hazard, 25 for you guys over in Prestonsburg. Up on satellite and radar, not much happening out there. Like I said, we are dry under a mostly clear sky, and that will continue to be the case throughout the rest of this evening. <clears throat> As we go towards about 8 o'clock, those temperatures falling off into those middle 20s, lower 20s later on tonight. So if you have any plans to be outdoors, be sure to bundle up. But the good news is we stay nice and dry throughout the rest of tonight. I got that full forecast and what you can expect for next week coming up just a little bit later. Keaton. Thanks, Cameron. Two high school students in Laurel County have started their own food and grocery delivery service. WMT's Chaz Jenkins tells us about the creation of CJ on the way. Students from South Laurel High School developing a courier service, beginning with grocery delivery. It wasn't really taken off like we expected, so uh, so I approached Jared again, and I was, we're trying to figure out ways, you know, to, to reach out to people, and we came up with restaurant delivery. And just like that, CJ on the Way was born. That's just a, a mix of our names. It's Connor and Jared on the Way, <laughs> and um, we thought it had a nice ring to it, so uh, we, we just went with that. Already looking for ways to improve and expand the business. Our end goal would be to expand across most of the state. Uh, that's way in the long term, but we want to have multiple drivers, uh, a location somewhere, but that's, that's, that's way down the line. Thankful for the community support from local businesses. They promote us and we promote them in turn. And uh, we deliver to them without the enormous like costs of something like DoorDash. Like DoorDash or Uber Eats, they'll take a huge cut of their profits. And meanwhile, we charge zero. Giving back to the region that has made them successful. Obviously, we want to support everybody else too. So a lot of our money, we reinvest into the community. You know, we'll come out to eat and yeah. reinvest. And we just want to help everybody out because they helped us out to get where we are. Helping the community they love. In Laurel County, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Holland says they also plan to improve by adding a fleet of vehicles, upgrading their website, and they want to start delivering dry cleaning and medicine prescriptions. Many people become well-known or even famous for their talents and skills, but one Laurel County native is giving, getting, gaining traction for something she's not good at. Cheyenne Loomis from London was selected as a competitor for the Food Network show Worst Cooks in America, where her and 11 other competitors fight to become the most improved cook. So far, Cheyenne's run has been interesting. She says she was even eliminated on last week's episode, but another competitor gave up their spot so Cheyenne could remain in the competition. I 
live in a small town, had never done anything like this before. And suddenly I'm in the kitchen with 12 different recruits from all different backgrounds and we're all relying on each other and learning something new. And yeah, it just, it made me a different person. The show was literally life-changing for me. You can catch Cheyenne compete on Worst Cooks in America every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on the Food Network. Small businesses in Pikeville are gearing up to spread the love. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and plenty of events and discounts host, hosted by small businesses will be accompanying the holiday. Business owners say they are excited to see plenty of couples come out and have fun with their Valentine and enjoy the downtown area. Between beer tastings, chocolate pairings, comedy nights, murder mystery dinners, we have a ton going on in this next week leading up to the Valentine's holiday. Mead says she looks forward to App Cycled's Comedy Night next Saturday. We'll have more with Mead and other small business owners in downtown Pikeville coming up tonight at 11. It's rare to see military men and women returning home from combat unscathed, but there are several groups and organizations out there designed to ease veterans' return to civilian life. One Whitley County couple is doing just that, but with a creative twist. WYMT's Alyssa Williams spoke with the founders of the Resilient Knights, nonprofit organization to learn more about their mission. After medically retiring due to a traumatic brain injury he acquired in Afghanistan, U.S. Army Sergeant Major Thomas Eichen and his wife Michelle were adjusting to their new normal. Nothing teaches an individual that is in the military and their family how to deal with being injured or ill. There's just no, no booklet on that. It was when they were taking part in a veteran pottery class that Michelle and Thomas came up with an idea that would change everything. Uh, what we learned out of that was when you're working with your hands and you've got something in front of you, you're not thinking about all the problems that are going on around you. You're thinking about what's right in front of you. And when you're able to finish that project, you feel like you've done something. You know, and that we picked up on that, and that's where we got the idea for the nonprofit. The two founded Resilient Knights, a nonprofit dedicated to providing veterans peer and art therapy. Through woodworking and other creative opportunities, Thomas and Michelle give support to veterans and their caregivers. And within a week, they can have this box that they can take home with them, and uh, we tell them, listen, you know, put that up on a shelf. You know, that way if you ever have um, ideas of harming yourself or hurting yourself at all, uh, and just look at, look at that box and give us a call. You know, because that's, sometimes that's all it takes is a phone call. Michelle Eichen says their organization helps others find a purpose after pain. We want to help veterans understand how important it is to turn around and help those that come behind us. You know, our path and what we had to go through educated us a lot. And going through that, if you can help someone else, that gives purpose to the struggle that you have. Helping other servicemen and women find their way beyond the battlefield. In Whitley County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Michelle Eichen adds they still have several plans in the works for the nonprofit, such as building cabins for the veterans and caregivers to utilize in a wood shop to host larger groups. You can find out more about Resilient Nights and their mission on our website at WYMT.com. Coming up, the Omicron variant is showing signs of receding, with newly get daily cases dropping by nearly half a million since mid-January. A gorgeous weekend is in store. We stay dry and mostly sunny, but how long would that stick around? I got those details coming up.